I'm not hunting her. It was like a demonic possession. The energy invaded me. Ever since I left this place, I've wanted to come back. There is something here that you can't see. Something bad happened to you. I was frozen. I couldn't really move. Oh, my God. Do I dare step in here? The hair just stood up on the back of my neck. I'm starting to think he may want something from you. Normally, I am not afraid. Tonight might be a different story. My name is Kim Russo, and I am a psychic medium. When I was nine, I was visited by the first of many dead people who wanted to communicate with the living through me. Realizing that I couldn't ignore my abilities, I chose to embrace them. Many people are haunted by traumatic paranormal events buried in their past. Some of these people have faces you might recognize. You've heard about their paranormal experiences. Now you are about to witness the moment they take me back to the place of the haunting in the hopes of uncovering the truth. This is the haunting of Harry Lennox. I'm in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. This is a small historic town. It's known for its natural spring waters that are known to have amazing healing properties. And as we drive through the town, I, I'm noticing a few of those natural springs. I'm headed out to meet with Harry Lennox. He's played in the movies The Matrix, Ray. He's currently playing on the TV drama The Blacklist. He's a pretty hardworking guy. I'm meeting him at the Crescent Hotel. It's probably one of the most haunted hotels in the country. He had an experience there, and he said he will never forget this experience. It has stuck with him till this day. Ever since my experience back in 2003, uh, I've wanted to come back because it's the gut check for me. I always have wondered, you know, who that might have been and, and, and what was going on there. I'm here uh, to stare it down, look at whatever spirits are inhabiting this place. Normally, I am not afraid. Tonight uh, might be a different story. In 2003, I had the great fortune of booking a job on a movie starring Billy Bob Thornton, who was a favorite actor of mine. It was called Crystal. It's kind of an American Gothic, beautiful uh, story. And it was filming in Eureka Springs. It was a beautiful old fashioned town and uh, loved the buildings and so forth. And I was booked here at the Crescent Hotel. It's old and sort of, uh, almost gothic in a, in a kind of way, and sort of spooky. It was close enough to the middle of town, but wasn't quite in the middle of town. So everything about it was, was right to me. It was the kind of authentic experience that we look for when you are on a location shoot like this. So I walked into the hotel. Thank you very much, sir. Got to the room, opened the door, got ready to go to bed because I had to work the following day. And so I turned on the television and wind down a little bit, watched some of the news or whatever it was, and uh, felt sufficiently tired. 
to go to sleep. So I turned off the television. As I was nodding off, I felt something. It felt like an EKG, you know, when they plug those things in. It was vibrating through me. I felt like there's something on in this room. If you could hear it, it would have been like the hum of a generator. But there was nothing on. So I unplugged the television just to make sure because the sound was irritating to me. And I lay down again. <laughs> Suddenly, I felt an angry, sort of agitated energy. And it felt like a female. This kind of electrical current started to vibrate in my head, in my throat area, this whole area. <laughs> then it was in me. It was like, what the hell is this? I couldn't move. The energy invaded me. And it was commingling with my conscious state. It was like a demonic possession. It felt like I was about to die. And then it was over. I don't know how long it lasted. But it was long enough, certainly, to know that I was not welcome in the room. <laughs> and I was spooked. <sighs> I went to the front desk, and I asked the gentleman if there was some, something wrong with that room in some way. And he said, what room are you in? And I told him. He said, that room is haunted. You know, we get stories about that room. And so he moved me to a newer uh, room. And after that, there were no further incidents. Sometimes you can feel something without seeing it. You know it's there. And I knew something was there. There's something about this experience and being in this hotel and being in this town uh, that it stuck with me. Uh, and I think it will always stay with me. I'll never forget it. being back at the hotel, and you feel something here. And I know there is something here that you can't see. I want to know more. And so, yeah, I don't know. We'll see who we meet today. I'm looking forward to hearing what Harry has heard about this hotel. There's always stories rolling around at a haunted hotel. But I don't like to go according to any of that because it's not always the truth. And today, I am seeking the truth. Started tuning into his energy, and uh, there's something about Harry that's coming across to me today that's interesting, to say the least. I f feel like Harry has a brother energy that's crossed over. I feel like he has a message for Harry today. Um, and it has to do with work. Um, th there's something that I'm picking up. There's a male energy. His cheekbones are sticking out. Like, he's very thin and skinny. Very gaunt looking. His eyes are sunken in his head. He has something to do with this hotel. I feel there's a lot of secrets, and I feel a lot of people died tragically here. Oh, boy. Here we go. Black clouds are rolling in just in time. Is that a black crow? It's a black cloud, a black crow. What the heck's going on here? I'm not even here in one minute. This place is creepy looking. 
And it's so old. Something bad happened to you. That guy is still with me, that, uh, that skinny, sickly looking man. He's edgy, he's edgy. He's pacing back and forth there. The energy is making me very, very nervous. She was like spitting up blood. I get a very eerie feeling when I walk in here. <laughs> Your dad just said, get that book finished. This place is creepy looking. And it's so old. Something bad happened to you. That guy is still with me, that, uh, that skinny, sickly looking man. He's edgy, he's edgy. He's pacing back and forth there. The energy is making me very, very nervous. Harry told me to meet him out here, so I, I hope he gets here soon. Is this man, I, I think he wants to talk. He wants to talk to me. He wants to talk to Harry. I feel like he wants to tell his story. Hey. Hi, Kim. How are you? How's it going? I'm doing well. Harry Lennox. Kim Russo. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. Russo. Russ. Italiano. Yes, yes, Italiano. <laughs> Excellent. So, thunderstorms are rolling in just as I got out of the car. Yeah. A black crow is above above head. Right. right. Something's already happening. Things happen here. When did you stay here? I stayed here uh, about a dozen years ago uh, for some time. I was here a few weeks back then. I, I don't know how much you know about this place, but I'm really excited yeah. and nervous at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, is it's a. This... Uh, I, I know a little bit about it because it was a pretty famous hotel for a little while. It's notably it haunted. It is that. I heard a guy named Dr. Baker use it as a treatment center for people with cancer. And then I think even later, it was like a mental health facility for, for women. It's interesting. Yeah. I picked up some information in the car already. I don't know if that has anything to do with anything, but. Yeah. Um, why don't we go in? Okay. Sure. I would love to get rolling. All right, let's do it. All right. Let's do it. Thank you. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is it, huh? It is. A lot of this is uh, original. Uh, you could were, tell. Yeah, you could tell. And then there were some, they've rehabbed it a couple times over the years. Why don't we go this way, start okay. out? Yeah, I get a very eerie feeling when I walk in here. Mm -hmm. Coming here, I picked up on a lot of, <laughs> what's this place? Why don't we go in here first? There's a lot of activity going on. All right. Do you believe in an afterworld? Do you believe, what are your beliefs? Well, I'm, I'm a Christian and I'm, uh, I was a seminarian. I studied to be a priest for some years. Well, I definitely believe in an afterlife. I think that uh, all energy is constant. It cannot be destroyed. So Correct. Once we leave this body, that energy goes somewhere. The spirit has some mass, some yeah. weight. And I think that that's true. And if, if the conditions are right, I believe, you can interact with them. Yeah, well, you have to definitely connect with the, a, a certain vibration. Right. Um, why don't we go in here? OK. Well, this room is interesting. Something feels off in here, though. You know, I didn't tell you about the gentleman that has been with me in the car all day yet. There's this skinny, gaunt, very sickly looking man. I'm, I'll say maybe he's like in his 50s. He totally roams around this place. Um, he has these uh, set of keys that jingle when he walks. I keep seeing him walking through the lobby, jingling his keys. And the thing about this guy is when I was waiting for you outside, he kept appearing to me and I was not seeing him, 
as much as I was feeling him. Right. And there, there's a room that he used to go in with a cabinet, and there was files with people's names. He has something to do with this hotel, uh, with this, this structure, I should say. Right. So far, that's all I know. I want to ask you how you feel when you walk in here. I haven't thought about it or put my, you know, spirit or mind to it, but uh, I don't feel any particular energy here. I think it's, uh, I have felt energies in other rooms. OK. So let's see what other rooms I feel drawn to. All right. And, and I want you to share everything you are feeling with me as well. All right. If you don't mind. Of course I don't. Have you ever seen a medium? I once uh, went to a place in California when I first moved out there, but it was uh, a group of psychics that sort of read aura, and they said some interesting things. My brother was a cop for three. I think you're saying too much. OK. Uh, uh, yeah. Because family stuff, yeah. I, as soon as you yeah. said brother, you're giving me the opening. Um, I don't know how many brothers you have, but there's one that was coming through to me in the car. Did you lose a brother? OK. Um, he keeps saying the name Rosa. Rose, Rosie, Rose. That's my niece. Would there be a Michael with that? Because <laughs> he also just said Michael. Wow. Absolutely. That's uh, Rosa is Michael's daughter. Rosa is Rose. Michael is my living brother. This is their way. I mean, that they like to let you know that I am on the right track and that you are connecting with the people that they say they are. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. He likes to tease you and bust chops. He's a very cool guy because he knows how to joke. He does not. He doesn't take anything too serious. Yeah. So I just want to give you his personality. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. You know, are you his baby brother? Yep. He told me that either either you viewed him as a father, or he took on a father role, or both. Oh. Yeah. That's uh, one hundred percent accurate. He. Um, he, he said he's with dad. Wow. Now, he's saluting me. He was a Marine or Navy? My father was, uh, was a private first class in the Army, got in early, joined very early in World War oh, II. OK. Um, brother. Brother, brother. He keeps saying brother, 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 like a name. Wow. Absolutely. That uh, was my father's nickname. Brother? Uncle Brother, that's what they, he was the oldest, and they called him Brother, even today. Oh, because he was the brother. oldest, like your, like your brother was, is he o the oldest yes. too? Yes, there's no way that you would know that they called him Brother. They're hanging together. Okay, that's great. And I feel, you know, they come around a lot when it's their anniversary of their death. Right. Um, because they know we'll be thinking about them all day. Five years ago today, my brother Larry, Died. Today? Today, yeah. The 27th of May, yeah. OK. You must have realized that when we picked this date to meet. I had no. I, oh, I didn't. you didn't? No, because this was postponed. I was supposed to do this, and uh, something else came up with uh, work, with my uh, oh. job job. And it had to be pushed back a little bit. <clears throat> uh, and so this was just happened to be. Well, they both just said we wanted to make sure he heard us. So, like, I think there's just more where that came from. Yeah. Your dad just said, get that book finished. It's important, he said. He has all this venom coming from him. He may want something from you.
your dad just said, get that book finished. It's important, he said. So can we have a tissue? <clears throat> yeah, I've been uh, trying to write a book for the past 25 years. Is it about racial tension or anything like that? It's a part of it. You're saying that. And then he says, look at other things that might have to take a back seat. It's like you've become this people pleaser and, uh, sure, I could do that, sure, I could do that. Yeah, I'll do that. And you're distracting yourself. Wow. Oh, that's, that's perfect. It's perfectly put. I'm always acting in something, always creating something, always working, always working. That book will bring out a lot of your emotions. It will be therapeutic, and that is why he wants you to work on it. This is going to be an interesting day because I feel that between your brother and your dad, they feel they need to guide you. It's been waiting too long, um, the guidance. But there's a message in all of this, and I have to figure out what it is. Um, I have two men that love you that will be joining us, and I feel that they'll take every opportunity to say something when they feel the opportunity arises. Yeah. Would you like to continue our sure. investigation? Yeah. No, I, I hear him. I hear you. <laughs> yeah, good, because there's, there's other places we need to really check in this hotel. Yes, so. What does that say? Crescent College for Women? Yes, conservatory. Why don't we go in there? Come on in. Okay. It's very cold in here. Yeah. This was definitely added on. Like a veranda? Well, yeah, look, yeah. look at the uh, brick. It looks like it was an outdoor, uh, and then they just added this. Yeah. Um, I just I just keep sensing that your, your, your brother and your father are here to protect us and, and to warn you about something. Okay. Um, that skinny guy is still roaming. I didn't know that he would be with me coming in each room. Mm -hmm. It's strange. He wasn't really that much in there except that he was showing himself to me. Right. But he doesn't hang out in that room. He, he, he does frequent this room. Now. Okay. Um, it, this doesn't feel comfortable at all. Um, he has all this venom coming from him. And I feel like the anger is coming from some betrayal. You know, they can even bring the anger into their death. Okay. And that's just so sad because uh, they have to find resolution at some point. Uh, sometimes us as the living can help them do that. Right. I'm starting to think he may want something from you. I'm getting a very, very strong vibe. There was more than one in here the night you were here. He has all this venom coming from him. The anger is coming from some betrayal. You know, they can even bring the anger into their death. Okay. And that's just so sad because mm -hmm. uh, they have to find resolution at some point. Uh, sometimes us as the living can help them do that. Right. I'm starting to think he may want something from you. I feel that he wants to tell you something. 
I don't know if you're up for the task today, but I, I kind of feel like he latched on and he's, right. he's. He wants in. Yes, yeah. that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we will get to it as we go, but uh, it's as if he's dropping pieces of his life in front of me. He, he, he does frequent this room. Now. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't like this room. I really want to go somewhere else. Yeah. You know, I'd love to go to that room that you had your experience in. All right. Your game. Yeah, you I, am, I, I am. Yeah. Because uh, this is just uh, the curiosity is really getting the best of me now. This way? That way. Do you remember being back here all that time ago? Like yes. You, it's, uh, you, you were filming something, right? Yep, doing a movie. And I definitely remember, because uh, it was a strange. Uh, movie? In, in some ways, yeah, sort of an American Gothic, uh, very spiritual kind of movie. This room in particular was, uh, just being at the end of this hallway always gave me the, the willies, as my mother would say. And this is a little creepy. Wow. Yeah, this is it. This is it? Yeah, this is the room. This bed was elsewhere. It was, I think, stationed here, and there was a television here. So they moved it around a little bit. OK. Oh, look at that window. That's yeah, I remember. Creepy. That is very creepy. I remember that very well. I'm, I'm actually feeling the energy of this room is very different. If, if you can see the difference, right? I can, I can, I can feel it even now. Like you know, for example, that the, oh. that little closet thing back there gave me the creeps. You know, back then. As right, well. and and it's not looking right at it. necessarily mm -hmm. what it looks like. It's it's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. th this room. Mm -hmm. What happened? Was it late at night? It was uh, quite late, like 1.30, 2 o'clock. And I came in and um, tried to wind down. Yeah. And so I turned on the television. Mm -hmm. I was tired. And so I uh, turned it off, the TV. Mm -hmm. And then I got, got this feeling, very palpable feeling, that something was still on in the room, like a... Like a vibration? Like a vibration, like the television, you know, when you can feel the TV but not hear it or see it, you know, like... I know what you mean. Yeah. So I I, uh, I made sure that the television was off, you know, and it was. Tried to go to sleep. Current was still there. I unplugged it, unplugged the television. Hmm. Went to sleep, and then the next thing I know, I was uh, this sensation electricity or whatever, a vibration, a, an awareness of a energy in my personal body, like here and here, mostly concentrated here. <clears throat> and I was frozen, like I couldn't really move. I felt like I was about to die. Sometimes an entity, a spirit, a ghost, they try to merge with our energy field. That's what it felt like. And it can actually become like a power surge. Like, you know, when a fuse box blows a fuse, mm -hmm. there's too much energy going through it. Same thing happens with our energy mm -hmm. systems. And then, of course, it will make our heart race. It, it can actually make us feel like we're having a panic attack. Um, yeah, yeah. That's so, exactly what it felt like. That's uh, perfectly put. It felt. Uh, like a panic attack. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm getting a very, very strong vibe. I see a woman. She looks matronly with the hair up. And she roams around this hotel. Right. That night, it felt to me uh, like it was a female. Did you see her? I didn't see her. I, I, I uh, like in my mind's eye. Yeah, well, which is right. very okay. fair. That's how right. a lot of us see things yeah. in your mind's eye. I, I didn't see her, but I certainly felt it. She was here, for sure. So you're not wrong about feeling the female. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I feel that there was more than one in here. You were actually feeling the agitated man, too. 
I feel both of them were trying to warn you the night you were here. Oh, my God. Do I dare step in here? Oh, the hair just stood up on the back of my neck. There was more than one in here. You were actually feeling the agitated man, too. I feel both of them were trying to warn you the night you were here. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, but <laughs> the energy was definitely agitated. It felt like you should, you don't belong in here. But eventually, uh, it left the feeling, the energy, the thing left me, and I remember sort of feeling like I had been released from something. Uh... That skinny guy, he must have worked here because he's looking at somebody's case mm. or, or, or a case file or something. Mm. Dr. Baker was a fraud. A lot of people died here, and he was basically taking their money. This is know. definitely not a doctor, though. Right. Um... Your dad is still with me. He's telling me something went on below this room, for sure. There is, I know there's a basement, because uh, they do the spa treatments and so forth out there. I have to totally check out the basement. Oh, this is creepy. Yeah, I definitely feel... Dense. Yeah. back here. Ooh, I just got the big, big chill as I walked through the door. Did you feel that? Yeah. Yeah, I did. What is this place? Isn't that a... Well, I've seen that before. It's a... An autopsy table? It looks like an autopsy table to me. Oh, look it's... at this. What is this? Looks like a meat it's... locker or something. It does. Am I, am I crazy to try to even open this? Ooh. Wow. My word. You think that's Dr. Baker? That's got to be him. You know, that's certainly not the man that's with me today. Yeah. Oh, my god. Do I dare step in here? I don't want to, but I am. Oh. A lot of people died tragically here. I can just see it back in the day. I, I just, they stacked them. They had to have two to three deaths a day. The legend has it. This was uh, where they would cart the bodies. I know that the healing spring waters run through this, this town. And people came to this town for that hope of getting healed. Right. So maybe they felt that between the healing springs and this doctor who's giving this false hope, that they had a half a chance to live. Right. You know, once the cancer patients or what have you would die, those people were fleeced, essentially, because there was no cure. I want to get out of here, right, if you don't. Yeah, I, I, I don't just, feel good in here. No, area. I'm yeah. not in this space. Yeah. That skinny guy is still with me. I see him tossing and turning in bed. Sweat is just pouring right off of this man. Yeah. Wait a minute. I see that woman you felt in your room. She was, like, spitting up blood. Ooh, the hair just stood up on the back of my neck. 
Have you ever dealt with anybody so manipulative and crooked like this? Yes, I have. Sweat is just pouring right off of this man. Wait a minute. I see that woman you felt in your room. She was, like, spitting up blood. Ooh, the hair just stood up on the back of my neck. I keep seeing that man. I feel like he worked here for a long time, maybe even before the doctor came in. Makes sense to me. Yeah. This is all very clear to me now. He knew. He knew. He had a hand in it. Uh, his intention started out really good. Mm -hmm. And then I just think, just like everybody else, money or greed got the best of this man. Um, there was a point where he crossed the line, and it was a big decision that he had to make. Well, now I'll tell you how I just uh, was shown. My spirit guides told me that that woman, she was a friend of his wife's. Um, and she had lung cancer. Mm. This woman came from a very wealthy family. I just heard the conversation between Dr. Baker and this man. And what I heard the doctor say to him was, she's going to die anyway. And the doctor told him, I'll split her cut with you. Right. And that's where he was tossing and turning. What do I do? It was a really nice amount of money. He recommended she come here and to get well. To get well. So he betrayed this woman. <laughs> He's more angry with himself for allowing himself to be manipulated. Right. Um, there were lies told over and over. Your father is communicating with me. He says, there's a connection, right. and that may be why we're back now. Have you ever um, dealt with anybody so manipulative and crooked like this? Yes, I have. Yeah. Do you want to go sit down and talk about it sure, somewhere? Sure, absolutely. I don't know if you see what I see, but so far you have. OK, yeah. How lovely this is. It is. In Arkansas. Wonderful place. Here we are. You. Yes, here we are. Let's talk about today. You started telling me when we were in the morgue that something similar happened to you where someone tried to manipulate you as well. It's amazing that you picked up on that and that you knew that the person who worked here, the man with the keys and, and, the, uh, and the attitude, so to say, uh, sounds almost the exact same as, as a person I thought was a friend. What happened was that a friend of mine, a person who was in my wedding, somebody that was one of my groomsmen, stole the hard drive that contained the last week of filming of my movie and demanded more money uh, and more control over the project. Uh, and I was shocked. It came completely out of nowhere. And um, fortunately, because of the unions and uh, my relationships in the industry, I was able to, to get the property back uh, without any damage. But I never saw it coming. And I had known this person for several years, so. You can identify with the feeling of betrayal. Right. So these entities were trying to warn you that someone was going to take advantage of you. You needed to have that first experience in order to bring you back today to hear the message. And the message from your dad and your brother is, because they're in cahoots on this now, you need to be a little bit more careful. Um, when you start writing that book again, you're going to get some jealous people that might steal your uh, creative ideas. 
you need to find out what people's intentions are. Okay. I'm telling you, Dad's, Dad's not going to stop talking till I leave. <laughs> Do you want to ask him anything or say anything? I guess what I would love to ask is for uh, my father's uh, his help, his inspiration to stay on me, and I'll, and I'll finish. How old were you when your father passed? I was not quite two. My father died, I think, in, in September, and I turned uh, two in November. You're just a little guy. I don't remember. Oh. I have no conscious memory of him. Of course, I'm sure pictures you've seen, uh, but he certainly knows you throughout the years. He already is helping you, so much so that he made today possible, uh, along with your brother. And that is uh, all the confirmation that I need. I love that. Yes. Yeah. Are we good? We're good. We're really good. You have his help. You didn't even need to ask for it. Amen. Have yeah. it a hug. <laughs> Kevin knew the things that nobody really could know unless they were in communication with, uh, with my brother and my father. It felt just like uh, they were here. Getting the clarity as to who the energy was in that room. When I stayed there, uh, that was surprising and it made perfect sense. Everything that Kim said uh, rang true. It was uh, an entirely uh, surprising day. Looking back, Harry was anxious to return to a hotel in Arkansas where he had a terrifying paranormal encounter that left him in fear for his life. On our investigation, we discovered that at the time of his experience, the ghost of a frustrated and angry man was actually trying to warn Harry of a future betrayal. Both Harry's late brother and father also cautioned him to focus and be wary of other people stealing his ideas. Harry's personal messages from the other side prove once again that more often than not, spirits come to us not to scare us, but in fact to help us.